choice of a car or a character, that car type, whether he's going to tell us his relative age, he's going to tell us its sort of class or status, he's going to tell us its experience, it might tell us what its talents or abilities are just by the shape and, and, and the design on it. Um, it might tell us what its job is. Like in cars, obviously, we have the sheriff who's, who's the police car, and mayor who's a tow truck. So um, all of these dis different decisions go into what our character type might be that we write in the story, and then how's that going to manifest itself into a car decision, and, and both male and female car decision, like uh, uh, was asked in the previous speakers. Um, and then finally, again, just the, the primer back on the cars world is we made a choice, uh, you know, John Lasser, who's the director of cars, student director of cars, um, made a choice that we need to look at the familiar world, the world that we're all familiar with, and we carify it as if cars were making a decision to design everything in that space. So in the, for the movie Cars, that had to do with the natural phenomenon in the, in the mountains and so forth. You would see, like, humans tend to see, you know, um, human uh, shapes. Cars would see car shapes, and we built that into the fabric of that. And now, in, in Cars 2, you can imagine, as you'll see today, we go to, uh, it's international film. So we are sort of have to redesign the world, the international world, and all its landmarks, as if they were designed familiar they're, they're what we know, but they were designed by cars and, and, and with sort of car knowledge. So it's been a real fun part of the process. Do you want to talk about some of the character basics? Yeah, so I'm just going to go through kind of like cars design 101. I mean, you've all seen the movie. Uh, if you're a parent, you've probably seen it 8,000 times. Um, but generally speaking, this is a very simple kind of overview. Uh, when we approach the design of a character, we look at the windshield, you know, we've got to read the eyes. Um, we got to deal with the rate of the windshield, make sure that uh, clarifies the eyes, the eye read. Uh, we got we generally shorten the uh, overall length of our cars. We deal with the uh, we shorten the wheelbase. We go up in diameter in the wheels and tires, and uh, we deal with, with body side and, and greenhouse proportion just again to uh, to deal with the eye eye ish issues. And also the, the hood. How long is the hood? And because that really connects the eyes with the mouth, right? So we deal with that as well. Also, we put we throw a little math in there, <laughs> and uh, and this image of this world just pops up. Um, I I kind of I kind of hold this as kind of the the, the golden mean. Uh, this was Bob Pauly's design from the first film, uh, Sally Sally Porsche. Um, it's 100% Porsche. It's 200% cube. It's all different proportions, but just pure Porsche love. Now, now for the movie Cars 2, there's, there's thousands of cars that we've brought from the real world into the film. The same process Jay's just talking about, shortening the wheelbase, bringing up the windscreen, um, has to happen to all those cars. And so there's other proportional changes that we have to make in order for those cars still to read like the cars we sort of know and love and still work as a character. So the primary conceit, of course, with the, with the car that we start with where, yes, indeed, the eyes are in the windshield. Um, because if the eyes are in the, the headlights, right, you spend the entire film looking here, and then you've got this entire rest of the car, what does it do? What does its function? And, and are, there, are there humans, indeed, in this world? What's going on here? So with that, we just didn't want to bring that question to bear. And it, it, I mean, think about it. It turns into this kind of plan of the ape strangeness. So, we stayed away from that. Um, our job was to provide all the tools to the animators for them to enable this car to emote and to act. So, of course, we giving it eyelids, eyebrows, hips and a tail for a little body English, feet and hand for gestures, of course, the mouth, and get a shoulder kind of cheek combination up in the front and the nose. All these things combined to uh, uh, enable the car to act. Of course, we want to keep the front end simple as well because we don't want to crowd too much graphic or uh, detail up front. We've got a little bit of stretching in the uh, material, of course, for the mouth, so we don't want things moving around and distracting from the read of the clarity of the eyes and the mouth. What, one of the, the principles that we try to bring in most all of our animation is beyond just sort of general authenticity, is trying to be true to the materials. When we get to that mouth area, um, on all the different models, right after it's come out of Jay and the team's design, we put it through animation calisthenics. 
And that's basically a, a, a simple set of the, you know, a variety of different expressions. And we throw that, that sort of architecture on the technical architecture onto the um, cars right away. And we'll see what's happening in that, in that whole mouth area. To see the things that are moving, if things are too shiny, if we've got little bump rats that are too close to the mouth and they're moving a lot, that's going to be distracting when that character is animated and when it's active. So we'll sort of refine some of the designs in order to sort of clear this field that Jay's talking about um, for the acting. The other thing, and just like when you see close ups in a live action film with the human face, there's a certain proportion that we're used to in seeing from eyes to nose to mouth and how those expressions work. Already with cars, we're dealing with sort of a limited, uh, sometimes, you know, obviously they don't have arms and legs, they can't run and jump around, they can't turn their heads. So for us, this becomes absolutely critical, um, right down to the camera angle we can shoot them from, and what sort of expressions they can do in a subtle way, and still sort of communicate the archetypal motions that, that you all need when you're watching a movie to understand what the characters think and feel. Cool. So, um See, I think we jump over there to uh, the Cars 2. So, you know, sometimes people say, how do you come up with your ideas for a sequel, not just the ideas for the movie? Well, as uh, you all know, Cars came out, and um, it was a, a real surprising phenomenon, perhaps not as surprising as some of the folks in this room, but it was a little bit like Mike talked about earlier, um, when people started talking about what cars do they love or what cars do they remember. And, you get to some of those, and they're cars from movies, right? They're unique designs. They aren't necessarily from the real world. Well, but what we discovered after the Cars came out, a successful film for us, but it's had this rising popularity that a lot of our characters uh, haven't necessarily experienced in the same way. Um, and so we discovered that this really hit a, you know, a vein with, with people as far as their fantasy and their emotional connection to something that's around us all the time, which are cars. Um, so for us, it was it's phenomenal, you know, the DVD, toys and stuff have just been off the hook for the last uh, five or so years. Um, we started talking about what were those two, what are some of the breakout characters for cars, and certainly the Queen and Mater were two of those. Um, when John and I first started talking about the story, where, where did we want to take it, where did we think, what are the different elements that we want to pull into this, because we're, um, we're dying to do a Cars too. Well, the sort of the unique friendship uh, is something we started to talk about. Um, not only they, they fun favorite characters, but we, this is a friendship that is got a difference in status, right? I mean, uh, Mater is the hometown friend. Um, Queen is a national, if not international, star and hero. So that's for us. It's kind of a dramatic goal, right? There's, there's ways we can put pressure on the friendship and still take advantage of a couple of our of our favorite characters. The other dynamic we started to talk about. Um, was where should the film take place? Obviously, Cars was, was sort of NASCAR, American-based film, kind of call it uh, America High Noon. When John took Cars out on the road for the press tour, you know, he looked, he, you know, whether it was Tokyo, Paris, London, what we call Porta Corsa is Italy. Um, and John couldn't help but see not only our characters and just imagine them in this environment, how they might interact, but um, also just looking at Boy, what would it be like to sort of carve off some of these great, different, iconic cultures? In, uh, and he just couldn't help but see them everywhere. But we got to sort of, you know, throwing it back and forth about, can you imagine Mater in Japan doing some of the different cultural things and so forth? And it just started to come up with some, some real fun ideas. So we thought, boy, cars, friendship film, international, absolutely. And then there was the ever overriding question, a Lightning McQueen, great athlete, right? Best in, in, in our movie, perhaps the best ath athlete, if you will. Um, in America, but was he the best race car in the world? And we thought it'd be really fun if we, if we took Lightning Queen and to gave him the challenge of if we created a world brand, we'd bring together racing champions from all different disciplines, and we'd find out how Lightning Queen would fare about that against these different international champions. So we created this idea of World Grand Prix. Uh, it's three different races that take place in Tokyo, London, and in Port Corsa, Italy, a uh, fictional city that we invented. And we have a cross discipline tracks, so we have both the dirt section and a regular street circuit course um, within these. And we thought well, there was a way that we could sort of equalize the race course, put all these champions into it, and, and see what happens. Um, and then we also had, came back to what was going to